G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm supposed to be starting my uh, Sony 666ES video today, and I probably will be able to start it today, but uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different, and the reason is after all summer long of having no thunderstorms at all, nature's decided to throw them all in one week all at once, so uh, I'm operating under very little sleep and I don't have much time to do anything because uh, I keep having to wake up in the middle of the night and run outside with the camera. So uh, this video is just to sort of uh, give you something to watch just in case I can't get the 666ES done in time, which is a very real possibility at the moment. But uh, yeah, today we're going to do an unboxing video slash show and tell video slash headphone talk video, I guess. I think I can manage all three of those in one video and and still be able to get a start on the 666ES. The 666ES, I'm going to start that off with capacitors. That'll take a day at least to do. And then over the weekend, I've got to be in swift current for a function. And uh, yeah, there's just not much time to do anything this week. So it is what it is. And since I saw Peter at ASB Custom do a... Uh, a video on how to pack cassette decks properly, I thought, well, maybe it's a good idea if I do sort of the same thing, too. This is my latest cassette deck purchase in this box. At least it should be. It had stickers on it from Japan, so it's that's what it's got to be. This one I decided to have shipped uh, via FedEx International Express, just to, because I wanted to see how fast it got here, for one thing. And for another thing is... Uh, I'm just so tired of waiting the three or so months it takes for the uh, Japan Post ones to get here. I've still got one in shipping. It's probably not going to be here for another month, but uh, yeah, this is my latest one, and it's here, so we're going to take a look at it. At least do an unboxing. I'm hoping to uh, start doing the uh, regular, or doing the uh, multi-diagnosis videos a little more often since the last one did so well on the nine tape decks. So, yeah, I think I'm going to be doing those regularly from now on since that one did so well. But, uh, yeah, this one will be in the next one of those. So, we won't be diagnosing on camera today. But, uh, we'll get this open and have a look. And I think my cutter needs another new blade. That's the way it goes around here. And I am using my Z50 to shoot this, and I'm very pleased to find out that uh, the Z50 is able to shoot in ISO 100 with these extremely bright shop lights. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take a look together at how well one map from Japan packs things, because I have never had anything else come in with this kind of level of packaging. So, yeah, you want to know how to pack a cassette deck, the Japanese will tell you how to do it. So, uh... First thing we do is open up the main box, and there's an inner box inside, so it's double boxed. Very important if you want to protect your cassette decks. Opening up the inside box, we find an extremely big layer of bubble wrap. And this, I should clarify, is only because the From Japan people recognize this as being a fragile deck. They only do that with high dollar decks and ones that are in flawless shape, so uh, be warned, if you go f with the From Japan option and they don't mark it as fragile, yeah, they kind of skimp on packaging when it's not fragile marked. But in that case, they still entomb the decks with a, uh, a very big layer of uh, bubble wrap, so... Yeah, the DD-99 was like that. It wasn't marked as fragile, but it was still well packed. So I'm going to drag you guys closer here. So you can see inside a little better, and I'm going to zoom in a bit. That should do the job. Okay, now there are cassettes in here as well. Because I've been doing that with my latest imports. This here is a Super VHS tape. I think I paid three bucks for it. It's uh, from our old pal Victor here. 
And it's not the only Victor thing in this box, I'll tell you right now. I'm kind of spoiling the surprise, but... I've been really into JVC lately. And that's the way it is. And this is... Brand new, shrink-wrapped in the uh, package yet. So, uh, the plan for this is to remaster my old mixtape, or video mixtape I had with... Uh, yeah, I might have mentioned that before, but... Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this anymore. This is a Super VHS tape, but uh, after finding out the big BRS Pro editing machine is not capable of recording at LP or EP speeds, it's not going to work for my purposes. I need the whole six hours, so most likely that tape is going to be done with my HRS 6900 up there. So, yeah. And there you can see exactly what's in this box. It's a JVC DD7. Direct drive, single capstan, quartz lock. So, uh, yeah, after finding out what that uh, DD99 was about, I had to have another one. What can I say? I haven't found another DD99 yet, but uh, I'm looking for one right now. But, uh, yeah, here are some of the cassettes I had uh, shipped with it. These are 150 minute. I was curious. Normally I don't record with tapes over uh, 110 minutes, but uh, yeah, lately I've kind of been curious about them. Most of the time these are really too thin to, uh, to really depend on, but uh, these are brand new 150 minute Maxell URs. So, uh, I'll give a couple of these a try, maybe. And yeah, these really are brand new. There's no markings at all on these things. And I ordered a total of five of them. Forget what I paid for them right offhand. But it wasn't much. I think it was like 10 bucks. Maybe 20 bucks. Somewhere around there. So yeah, I've got the five 150 minutes. And I've got some other new tapes I'll show you in a bit, but uh, for now we'll put those to the side and unbox uh, or unpackage these. Trying to slice this so I don't cut open the uh, actual cassette packaging. Yeah, this is what you get when you buy stuff from Japan and have things shipped together. They really pack things well. Okay, so we'll get these tapes out. And this is another thing I'm probably going to be doing more of, is buying my cassettes from Japan. For one thing, they give you, or they got uh, tape lengths we didn't get over here, like uh, this here. This is a 74 minute. And I'm probably going to be buying a lot more of these 74s because uh, I've been finding there are a lot of vaporwave mixes that just fit perfectly onto 74 minute tapes and 70 minute tapes. So yeah, I've got a 70 minute right there. This is a PS2 Axia. And I'll tell you right now, Axia is Fuji. And uh, Fuji used to be my fallback option when I couldn't find Maxell. So uh, that's why I got these. So we've got this one 74 minute Sony, 70 minute Axia, 74 minute Axia. This is PS2 for car audio. This will be a late 90s tape. I don't know how good uh, Fuji was in the late 90s because uh, that was long past the time I stopped uh, doing any recording. Here's a 64 minute PS2 Axia. And this one is a TDK CDing 2. 74 minute and I've heard that these aren't so great, but uh, I'll give it a chance I've got some other CDing 2 tapes. I should show you But uh, we'll do that later For now, let's continue on with the actual tape deck. Here's these the owner's manual, and I'm so glad this thing came with one I just couldn't believe I actually won this in the first place let alone one with the actual owner's manual it's all in Japanese, of course. And yeah, I'm excited to get to this one, but it's going to be a 2025 deck for sure, because uh, 
that's how overloaded I am with uh, with stuff these days. Anyhow, we'll continue on, on with the unboxing here. And you can see that From Japan has placed a double layer of uh, extremely sturdy bubble wrap along every side of this thing. Like I said, I do not have any recollection of any eBay tape deck coming packed like this ever. Pull the tape deck out now. It's packed in a in another layer of bubble wrap. I'll just set it off behind me and uh, now we can see that there's a double ra double uh, layer of uh, bubble wrap on the bottom as for protection. So that's about it. There's nothing else in this box. So I'm going to put this box away and then we'll pick up on the table and then we'll unwrap the uh, deck and we'll see what kind of condition it's in. All right, continuing on with our little unboxing here. We're about to have our first look at uh, the JVC DD7 I bought. And once again, extremely well packed. And I should clarify as we go along here that uh, this level of packaging is not why I switched to uh, From Japan over Jouse. Jouse packs things the same way, trust me. My XK007 came from with them and uh, it was just the identical situation as to uh, what we're dealing with here. Super well packed. They want to make sure you get your stuff the way it left Japan. And they will do whatever it takes to make that happen. So, how does this look in person? I'm excited about this one. It looked like it was brand new in the pictures. And, uh, something going on with the tape door right now, I can tell you that. But here it is, and oh yes. She's in much better shape than the DD7 was. At least I think she is. The door was partially not on properly. That's the, the issue there, is the door. I can see corrosion on the buttons here, but, uh, yeah, there we go. Much better. That was an easy fix. I'll just let the bubble wrap fall off my table here so it's out of the way. And yes, it doesn't look new in person, I'll tell you that right now. It needs a lot of cleanup. But uh, it, it does look like it's in much better shape than the, uh, than the DD-99 did. It's going to need quite a bit of service. I have my doubts about those heads, but uh, I actually didn't buy this one to a, as a serious uh, listening tape deck. I'm actually hoping the DD-99 is going to be the real deal on that regard. Tempted to power this up now, but I'm also tempted to just leave it for now because uh, we really do need to save this for the next multiple diagnosis video, I think. So, yeah, I'm going to resist the temptation to fire this up right now. But it looks like it made it in one piece. No dents, no damage anywhere. It's going to need capacitors just like the DD99 does. And uh, I will tell you one thing about the DD99. Since I did that multiple unboxing video, I have managed to uh, get it to work well enough to give me a wow and flutter reading before we service that one. And I'm going to tell you exactly what, what that came in at because, uh, well, it's actually extremely impressive. Even without servicing or anything else, that machine did 0.029% wow and flutter. 
and it only did that on one tape and that's the the uh, 3 kilohertz tape I made with my RSB 755 which confirms that deck is working in spec it's at least doing 0.03 percent wow and flutter and I kind of knew that already from the uh, wow and flutter video I did but uh, the fact that the DD99 is able to show that in its current state unbelievable I'm starting to believe that thing can actually do 0.019 percent and this is very much the same transport so uh, yeah that's what this is here for is to make uh, three kilohertz test tapes for yours truly and nothing else if it records well that's also fine I'll take it but uh, that's not what it's here for it's here to help the DD99 pull down uh, three kilohertz test tapes and yeah I'm seeing that there's some uh, degree of uh, wear on the uh, buttons here you see the labeling is kind of worn off on there and yeah like I said they're in corroded in general but uh, should be able to clean those up I hope otherwise it just looks fantastic but uh, yeah before I start getting too much temptation here to fire this thing up I'm gonna pull it off the uh, table here and put it in the rack beside me all right next segment showing you guys all the blank tapes I've been pulling in lately and uh, I realize you've already have seen these 150s I'm just using it to frame the shot so I'm gonna show you the the next batch of tapes I got in these were a, an eBay purchase for way too much money. I think I paid a hundred bucks for all six of these. I'm excited about these. I have never tried the Maxell XL2S tapes before. And I wanted to. So uh, that's why I paid the uh, money for this particular lot of blank tapes. I'm excited to, to try and f see what these are like. These are all going to be for mixed tapes, all six of these. Not so much for the other ones you've already seen on the on this video, but uh, yeah, these are for for me doing modern mixtapes, and they're all 100 minutes. I've got three of the XL2S tapes. These are all from the early 90s, I believe. I won't know until I get access to the uh, to the uh, date code on them, but uh, these are going to be early 90s, I'm sure. So I've got three of those, and then the other three are very early 90s possibly 1990 if not 1989 these are xl2 100s these were always my favorite tapes when i was uh, still in uh, school there i just swore by these tapes because they recorded well on everything i had which is both the uh, the rx ds20 from panasonic and the old uh, silver built uh, or I should say Shin Shirasuna built a Pulsar CC4000 boombox. Neither one of those boomboxes had a problem with these tapes, and they're still sounding really well when I transfer them over to a computer these days with the uh, Nakamichi BX150. Those tapes recorded just perfectly, and I'm so glad I decided to uh, move to these rather than just buying off-the-shelf random tapes that I used to do back in the early time in uh, my mixtape uh, passion there but uh, yeah I've got some more tapes to show you these were an import from Japan they came with one of the decks I had brought in or no wait they didn't came, come with uh, any of the decks they came with the uh, the uh, JVC XUD 400 that you guys have not seen on the channel as of the time I'm recording this but you will have seen by the time you're seeing this video so yeah these came with that and what these are are CDing two, all of them let's see we've got a 120 there 120 there 120 there 120 there 120 there 120 there and the last two are 60 minutes so yeah, I've got a total of 620 minute high bias chrome CDing 2 tapes here. And what these are for are is uh, to rebuild the mix tapes I, I made back in the 80s that have not fared very well over the years. Some of them have lost one channel, others have been damaged, and I just wanted to, to uh, have something to rebuild them with. 
And the reason they're 120s is because most of my old mixtapes that are damaged are 110s or 100s. And uh, in order for me to remaster them using uh, high quality sources these days, I have to add in a little time because, uh, well, most of those were recorded off the radio with parts with ends cut off and uh, yeah, that kind of good stuff. And these 60 minutes are going to be probably for Vaporwave. The one thing I liked about this auction is none of the J cards have been written on. So these are like brand new tapes for me. So uh, they will work fine for what I need them for. Anyhow, the uh, Technics RSM 275 XC that's still coming in from Japan has another set of tapes coming with it. I think there's a, a batch of five Sony 50 minute tapes in with that one. And I can't remember what other tapes I threw in with that auction, but uh, or with that shipment, but uh, there's more coming. So yeah, I'm I'm loaded with tapes now. I've got these eight ones here, six brand new Max L's over here. Uh, let me stack this better so you can see them all. Then with th this latest deck, there's these 550 minute Max L's, and you've got the other. Uh, set of uh, Axia and TDK tapes and Sony tapes that I showed you. So yeah, I'm fully stocked with tapes for a while now. Especially once the, the uh, next deck shows up. So yeah. And we can't forget the uh, Victor XG SVHS tape. This is only the fourth SVHS tape I have ever bought. They were just always so expensive I couldn't buy them. So I'm glad to have this one to, to rebuild my uh, my uh, video mixtape from the early 90s. Because believe it or not, I still play that tape often. And I would like it to be A, in good quality, and B, with audio that doesn't drop out every five seconds. Because the deck was in need of repair that the uh, factory service techs could not handle repairing. All right, so our next little discussion is going to be about headphones. I woke up and realized earlier this week that uh, I'd promised you guys I was going to get a new set of studio headphones before I got to the next big dragon killer, or I should put that in quotes, dragon killer, so to speak, tape deck. And that's the uh, JVC TDV 931. And that finally clicked in this week that uh, I was now maybe three or four or even maybe two weeks away from getting to that deck and I still haven't gotten those headphones. So I ordered them up this week and I'll tell you what I got in a second here but uh, this is what they're replacing. These are Koss R80s and they are by far the worst sounding Koss products I have ever bought. I used to be a big believer in Koss and I still am because they're uh, lifetime warranty just is worth its weight in gold quite frankly but uh, these have already been in for warranty service once they're probably going to need it again i don't like how they shipped them the last time they're not supposed to go that far out of a plum like that but uh, yeah you can see the leathers all coming off this side and uh, yeah these are just really poor quality in terms of build quality. In terms of sound quality, they're not the worst I've ever heard, but they're not the best either, quite frankly. In terms of other cost products I have owned and used over the years, I started off with the Pro 466 models. Those were the best sounding cost products I've ever had. Or were they? Yes, they were. Easily the best sounding, but uh, I decided when I got these that I would give those to my sister and that was my mistake because these sound worse in every single way. A lot of people have said that uh, these are like the uh, Porta Pros except with closed backs and I can tell you right now no that is not the case because I have a pair of Porta Pros that sound way the heck better than these. So yeah I don't know if it's just because uh, I got a bad set from the factory or if uh, or what but uh, like I said, these have been in for warranty service already before because uh, I believe it was uh, this side 
had a rattling driver in it from new and I sort of uh, fixed it well enough to tolerate it for a, a long time and then I sent it in for warranty service. I didn't expect them to honor the warranty quite frankly because I didn't buy the these things from an authorized uh, cost dealer in the first place but yeah they sure did they fixed them up and sent them back and yeah this this is the side they didn't fix up apparently but uh, yeah needs fixing up again but I'm not gonna bother doing it anymore because uh, I don't like the sound quality at all never have so uh, what am I using these days well I have been using these these are Edimotic ER2XR in-ear monitors and I love these things they sound fabulous better than any cost product I have ever tried and I've had KSC 75 so if you know costs and you know those then yeah you know how hard it is to impress me now because uh, these were the first headphone purchases that have impressed me in decades they're I think going for 175 bucks new these days I think I paid 150 for this set three years ago but uh, I cannot say enough good things about them they have a little bit of a a base hump below say maybe 60 Hertz or so and I like that for casual listening but in terms of studio listening like I want for for a being these uh, really high dollar cassette decks I would rather not use these for one thing they're a pain to use on a regular basis because you got to stick them way inside your ear holes in order to get them to work well but uh, yeah I love these for when I'm traveling and I'm in a crowd and I just don't want to listen to other people for too long I want I bought these for the noise isolation and that's what they're good at and also they have an extremely flat frequency response with that little bit of a bass boost that I like from casual listening they're perfect so what I need from my next pair of cans to replace these things is this only in full-size headphones with maybe a little less of that bass boost down below and in that regard they're not here yet I paid 350 bucks for them so they better be good I bought a set of Bayer Dynamic DT880 premiums and like I said they're not here yet so I hope they're going to work for me I understand they have a bit of a treble spike and that's kind of what I want from these I want a little bit of a treble spike around say 8 to 10 kilohertz because that's where my hearing starts to uh, drop off a little bit and uh, yeah I just have the feeling that those are the right tools for the job I was initially going to go for the uh, DT770 but uh, yeah decided that closed back is probably not right for me anymore and the DT990s are full open back with an extremely large treble spike so I thought those would be likely to unimpress me as well or likely to dis disappoint me as well I should say and uh, I did have some other headphones in consideration like I was uh, I'll drag these back over here like I was considering the mass drop uh, 6xx headphones as well but uh, my first experience with that with that particular website was not a positive one we'll just leave it at that they didn't give me my uh, discount go code for signing up so I thought well I don't need this I would have to get these imported from the US they'd likely show up with customs fees attached to them and I'm just so sick of dealing with customs fees after all these imports from Japan let's just forget about that option go with the Bayer Dyna dynamic stuff so that's what I'm doing Bayer DT 880s incoming so uh, I'll show them when they get here on some video or another but uh, they're not here yet so yeah but I think that's all I got for you today oh wait there's more I had some uh, I had some stuff show up from China I've got some idlers for the uh, DD7 and DD99 because they are the same transport I got four of them I don't know for sure that they're the right idlers I've got some incoming from fix your audio as well that may work better and I'm waiting for that order to show up yet it hasn't arrived yet but uh, yeah I've got these just in case and along with those I have 
a set of random idlers just in case I need some for a deck that doesn't have any other better matches of uh, what I've got already so uh, yeah I've got a set of random 20 idlers here okay so that's it now I don't have anything else to talk about except for how I'm losing my voice because I've been talking so long and I'm not feeling good because I've been going out late at night shooting thunderstorms this week and uh, I have no time or money or energy well I have money no time or energy I hope you you will have seen the uh, the triple uh, six ES in the time that this is possibly going up which is two weeks from Saturday let's see I've got uh, what is it this Saturday is the open reel tape deck again in which I found out I got the entirely wrong parts whatsoever for uh, fixing that thing and uh, yeah the one after that is the JVC mini disc combo unit which turned out to be an absolute dumpster fire so either you're seeing this video the Wednesday after said dumpster fire or you're seeing it the Saturday after said dumpster fire in which case you know that the Sony is running long and uh, yeah but tomorrow I'm gonna start on this the the, uh, the triple six ES video and hopefully you'll get to see it on time if not then this is what it is anyway that's gonna be it for this video guys I'll see you in the next one take care